I have here one half of Power Couple, lead guitarist, college educator, former college educator, and radio personnel, Mr. Solomon Morris. How are you doing today? Very well, Jamal. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, so I see you have here with you Belle. Um, can you tell us a little bit about her? Yes, Belle, Belle is uh, an arch top, a uh, hollow body jazz guitar. This is a was originally sold by Sam Ash in the 90s. I bought it second hand for um, about $200 and it has a wonderful sound. Sounds like a much more expensive guitar. Awesome. Okay, so I hear that you are now a full-time guitarist and performer. Uh, could you elaborate on that? How have things changed in regards to your daily life? Well, um, I don't work for anyone and um, other than myself and that's a very good feeling it's a very liberating feeling uh, but at the same time it's very very challenging because the only thing that you get is what you actually go out and get right so it's not it's not easy but it's very liberating at the same time well it sounds like a, a great job to have you doing exactly what you like to do um, do you at all miss your former position as a college educator uh, no, I don't miss teaching in an institution, uh, but uh, when I'm out there in the streets or in the subways, I meet people and uh, we talk and that is an, uh, a more gratifying experience because I'm learning from them and they're learning from me. So I think that uh, the learning process, as we know, never stops. Right. Right. Awesome. So it's great to see that you're doing exactly what you love to do and making money while doing it. Um, Sounds like a blessing. So take us on like the typical day. What's that like? Or is there a typical day? There is no typical day because, but uh, generally speaking, there are some general things that you have to get out there and get out there early. Uh, sometimes um, there are certain places if you want to play, if you're playing out in the street, you know, you know you need to get a place at this time. If you're playing in the subways, you got to make sure that you're not there during rush hour because oh. it becomes intolerable, the, the sounds of the train. Uh, so there are just some things to, to particulars that you have to know. Um, so, and you have to feel your way around this. So it's, there's no real typical day at all, which is right. what makes it a wonderful thing. Because there is no such thing as a typical day. Understandable. So what is it like dealing with people? I mean, I know you're out there. There are other performers competing for places to perform. Um, let's talk busking etiquette in regards to the audiences as well as the performers too. Well, busking etiquette is a very simple. Uh, you don't set up and play where someone else is playing. It's, it's really that simple. And um, that's, that's the main thing. Uh, you don't want to be too loud, you don't want to be playing too softly, you have to find that appropriate sound level right. uh, so that people don't feel like they're being attacked. <laughs> I mean, uh, what happened is sometimes, um, you know, some people are so anxious to be heard that they can forget that uh, it's a little too loud. I remember one time a woman, older woman, uh, put some money in my um, uh, basket and she said, thank you for just not playing loud. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, there are, you, know, you have to find the sound level that is appropriate uh, for, for the people. Right, so, so have you had any um, run-ins with fellow performers? Any uh, minor, one, uh, two minor things. One time a fellow set up behind me. I didn't even realize anyone was behind me. I just heard this noise, it sounded like a drummer, but it turned out to be someone tap dancing oh. behind me. And it was a very good tap dancing, <laughs> very, very loud. But the problem was, I was there first. <laughs> uh, so he only stayed there for like five minutes because, you know, he was, a, he was a good tap dancer. But I have an amp, I just turned my amp off <laughs> and drowned him out. I, oh, guess, wow. I guess you got the point. Uh, and also, so, sometimes I'm playing a song and uh, people want to sing. And they want to stand next to me and sing <laughs> as if somehow or another we are a duo. And that's okay sometimes depending upon the spirit of the person. Mm -hmm. But if people don't have the right spirit, they can just interfere with what you're doing. And so when that happens, I just stop playing. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and let that person, you know, sing. You see, so, but, um, you know, but generally speaking, there, there aren't many 
um, run-ins. That's crazy. It sounds like somebody should write like a code of ethics on this stuff. I think that it has more to do with the fact that I'm not out there beating people down with my music. Right. It's, it's quiet. It's calm. It's calming. So they might like the music. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> because they're at work too. And maybe they need to relax a little bit. This is true. Well, I do have a question in regard to your music. Um, I've heard the, the great saying, which is not one of my personal favorites, personal favorites. Music is a universal language. So elaborate on how you would use this language to speak to the typical New Yorker. I'm coming home from a long day at work, tired as hell, stressed because my vacation to Disneyland was delayed, um, hoping that I get a seat on the train. What would your music say to me on that day? It will say, if you don't get a seat on the train, uh, you don't live there anyway. You're going to be home. <laughs> Basically, the, 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 the music, uh, uh, it doesn't say anything in particular. Right. It just says, basically, uh, it allows people, you know, when people do forms of meditation, sometimes they have some very, very quiet music. And that's what I would wanted to provide, just the sort of atmosphere so that they could, you know, in a sense, get back in touch with themselves. You know, you're all day long, you're working with somebody, right. and you got to deal with this, you got to deal with that. And, you know, you haven't had a chance to just be with yourself. And hopefully the music allows you to be with yourself. Okay, I understand. Well, there we have it, people. Mr. Solomon Morris. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out to conduct this interview with me. Greatly appreciate it. It's been my pleasure, Mr. Jamal Harris. Thank you so <laughs> All much. All right, this is Jamal Harris signing out. Mm -hmm.